This is part 88 of ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss unobtrusive validation in ASP.NET MVC. In part 87, we discussed obtrusive and unobtrusive JavaScript. Please watch part 87 before proceeding with this video. In ASP.NET MVC, client-side validation is unobtrusive. To turn on client-side validation and unobtrusive JavaScript for the entire application, we usually do that using these two keys that are present within web.config file. Is it possible to control these features using application code? The answer is yes. For example, let's say based on certain conditions, I want to be able to either enable or disable these features programmatically. To achieve that, we can specify these settings within application underscore start event of the global dot ASAX file. And since we are specifying these settings within the application start event handler, these settings will be applicable for the entire application. Is it possible to turn these features on or off for a specific view? Again, the answer is yes. Let's say for example in my entire application, on a given specific view, I want to disable these features. And to achieve that, all we need to do is pass false as the argument for these two methods, enable client validation and enable unobtrusive JavaScript. And then both of these features will be disabled on that specific view. Now. We discussed that client-side validation in ASP.NET MVC is unobtrusive. So how is this unobtrusive validation implemented in ASP.NET MVC using data attributes? For example, let's say we decorated name property with required attribute. And then if we have both client-side validation and unobtrusive JavaScript enabled, then the generated HTML for the name field will be as shown here. Look at that, there are these two data attributes, data-val. So basically this indicates that the unobtrusive validation is turned on. And data-val-required, that is equal to the name field is required. So basically this indicates that the name field is required and the associated error message will be displayed if the validation has failed for that field. Let's actually look at that in action. So in the web.config file, we already have client validation and obtrusive JavaScript enabled. And if you look at name property within the employee class, this property is decorated with several attributes. Let's get rid of all of them except required attribute to keep things simple. Let's build our solution and let's go ahead and reload this view. Let's now right click on the page and view its source. And look at this, the HTML that we have here is clean HTML with no traces of JavaScript whatsoever. And then if you look at this name field, so here we have the input field for name and look at this data-val equals true and data-val-required equal to um, the name field is required. Basically, these data attributes are used by jQuery validation plugin to perform the client-side validation. Okay, now let's turn these features off. So within web.config file, let's disable unobtrusive JavaScript. Let's save the changes. Let's reload this view again. Let me right click and then view the page source. First of all, notice the input field for name. We don't have those data dash attributes generated. And then if I scroll down, look at that, we have JavaScript right here. Okay, so basically if we have unobtrusive JavaScript enabled, then you know these data attributes are generated which are used by jQuery plugin to perform the client-side validation. If we don't have this unobtrusive JavaScript enabled, then the data dash attributes are not generated and then the JavaScript is spit out on the page itself. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.